gentlemen, it's another broadcast of Jerusalem's Gate. I've uh, took some time off. I had to handle some things, but I'm back now, and I appreciate everybody being so patient with me. There was a, a while there that I didn't come out with any videos, but uh, I had some personal things that I had to take care of. Uh, today's video is uh, coming out of Fox, and you know, when President Trump went to, I mean, when President Trump and Kim met at the summit uh, to denuclearize North Korea. It's amazing how, many, how much persecution uh, President Trump, how they uh, watched it, every movie he made and made comments about it, some of the media has. And for instance, when the general, uh, when uh, he shook the, one of the North Korean hand, uh, hand, general's hands, uh, the general saluted him and President Trump saluted him back. And, and I, I watched an article, I'm not going to name what uh, source, but uh, the, he got persecuted on that. Can you believe that? Now, I thought it was a sign of uh, being on the same level and uh, being humble and uh, showing uh, openness to him. I thought it was a, a good gesture. And uh, uh, President Trump, I, I tell you what, President Trump has got to be the most persecuted president that the United States of America has ever had. Uh, they watch every move he makes, most of the media, and uh, has always has a bad word to say about him. Now, in regards, I'm fixing to play a video from uh, Fox that talks about the denuclearization uh, process in North Korea and what it uh, details and everything. This is my personal opinion. This, my personal opinion is, I have trouble believing for some reason that Kim is, you know, 100% uh, denuclearized, 100% of his weapons, of his uh, uh, his material, weapon making material, his ability to produce uh, uh, the elements that are used uh, in making an atomic weapon. I, and then again, this is my own personal opinion. I have trouble believing that uh, Kim is going to do that. I really do. Uh, I think that uh, the summit. Uh, well, he has some, he has good intentions, but I think it, it, it should be very trouble. It should be very troublesome for him to give up a hundred percent of his nuclear weapons and all his material uh, to make uh, the elements to go into an atomic weapon. I have problems with that. And again, that's a personal uh, opinion. That's my just my personal opinion. And. Uh, you know, as we used to say before, cell, pho cell phones, that and a quarter can make you a phone call, you know. But uh, let's go on with the video. Uh, I, and, and another thing I'd like to say before we go into the video is President Trump handled it perfectly. Absolutely perfectly he handled that. Uh, he's keeping his sanctions on, on him until the denuclearization process, if in fact does happen, uh, is uh, done. Uh, but I gave my opinion on that uh, anyway. I hope I'm wrong. I, I'm telling you, I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong. But uh, I'm having, for some reason, I'm having trouble thinking that Kim's going to give up all of his nuclear weapons, all his ability to make the elements to make atomic weapons. I have problems with believing that. I hope I'm wrong, <laughs> to be honest with you. With that being said, thanks everybody for watching Jerusalem's Gate, and on with the video. That was Mike Pompeo in Seoul this week, insisting sanctions relief will not come to North Korea until it completely denuclearizes, a process the Secretary of State says could take as long as two and a half years. Pyongyang staged the destruction of one of its test sites last month, but dismantling its entire nuclear program is another matter. So how can the U.S. verify what North Korea actually has in its arsenal. Let's ask David Albright. He's the founder and president of the Institute for Science and International Security and a former weapons inspector. Mr. Albright, thanks for being here. Oh, it's good to be here. So uh, uh, let's start out by saying, by uh, giving us the lay of the land. How many weapons, nuclear weapons, do we think uh, North Korea really has? Well, it's a, it's a very difficult estimate to make because we know, know just not that much. I mean, estimates I've made, it's anywhere from 15 to 35 nuclear weapons. Number could actually be higher um, if, if they have more capability than, than we're estimating. So it's, a, it's very tough. But they, they have you know, a couple dozen nuclear weapons. Maybe you know, there's a chance it's fewer. But again, it's uncertain, and, and the, the problem is, is that it's very hard to know 
where countries make nuclear weapons uh, and where they store them. So w what we fall back to typically is trying to look at their capabilities to make plutonium and weapon-grade uranium, and those facilities tend to be easier to understand and to inspect. All right, and how many of those facilities do we know that they have? Because I know that for a while we knew they had a plutonium uh, site, but we didn't know about their enriched uranium site. That's right. The plutonium program is much better understood. It was a it was a focus of the six party talks in the 2000s and so right. and, and and earlier and so a lot's known about that and we don't think they have a secret reactor, but they do have a secret enrichment plant. We're pretty sure and we don't know where. Well, Western intelligence has a pretty good idea of where that plant is. They also have another one at Young Beyond, which uh, which they built in secret and revealed in 2010. So so. I think the working assumption is they have two substantial uranium enrichment plants, one North Korea admits to, one it doesn't, and those plants are going to have to be thoroughly inspected. But, but before that, I mean, what you want in verification is for the country to reveal in an honest way what its nuclear capabilities are, and in this case, including its nuclear weapons production capabilities and its and the size of its nuclear arsenal. Right. So that that is that means that at a first step, what you want from North Korea is essentially a declaration, a list. Here's what we have in terms of our weapons, in terms of our sites for building those weapons, in terms of our sites for enriching uranium and plutonium, and so on and so on and so on. And you would and you would like that that the initial list could be almost just like a list, but you would like them to allow visits to those sites so that inspectors can, in a sense, get the lay of the land. And and these inspectors probably should not be the International Atomic Energy Agency. I mean, it probably should be an effort organized by the United States and its and its allies in the, in that region, including China. Uh, well, let me not call them an ally, but at least a, a friend right. and, on this issue. And and that and that and then then North Korea needs to create a narrative of its nuclear weapons program and that would become a full-blown declaration which could then be verified by the inspectors okay so and when you talk about inspectors you said that it should be an international group not the the UN and the US should be should be part of that but does it have to be inspections that are uh, essentially on demand that means anywhere we want to look we can go and you'll help us look and see what you've got they, they don't have to be that intrusive. I mean, but North Korea has got to be willing to allow, well, to tell an honest story. I mean, right. in a sense, you know when you see it. Then there's going to be some places, I mean, we have them, lists of, of sites that are suspect nuclear sites. I mean, they're going to have to allow some level of, of visits to places where we just want to check it out. You know, is, is it, were we wrong? Were we right? You know, is it falling off the list because it's closed down? I mean, but, but so there's going to have to be fairly broad access, but it doesn't have to be like in, in the case of Iraq where the inspectors had the absolute right to go anywhere. I mean, it can be less than that and, why, and it can why, work quite well. But why less than that if we know from the past that North Korea has not told the truth? Why shouldn't it be just as intrusive? Because Saddam had lied for years as well, and that's why it was as intrusive. Well, it, I, what I'm saying is it would be great if it could be that intrusive. North Korea hasn't allowed inspectors to go outside of Young Beyond to this day, except right. maybe one or two cases where U.S. had a special mission to do and paid a, quite a price to to get there. So I think it, you, what you want to do is design a system where it's good enough, but you don't want to demand perfect. Okay. Do we have to insist that they stop enriching uranium and that we basically be able to haul out all of the stockpiles of enriched uranium they have and plutonium and haul it out of the country? They, they certainly have to stop. I mean, that's going to be an issue. I mean, North Korea is going to say, yeah, but we have some needs, civil reactors, we want to fuel. I think the United States has to be very firm. No enrichment at all. It's just, it's just a bad idea, uh, given the history of the whole effort with North Korea. Is they should be shutting down and dismantling their uranium enrichment program, along with their plutonium program and their nuclear weapons program. And, and that's absolutely necessary. It's not about freezing. It's really about getting rid of in, in a verifiable manner. And so it's critical to do that. And, uh, and I would assume that would include the plutonium as well. No, for sure. Um, they may keep a reactor operational that if somehow if it's making electricity, they may even import reactors, but they wouldn't be enriching uranium for those reactors. Those reactors would be 
structured or designed in a way that they're what we call very proliferation resistant. Um, and and but that that part of the peaceful nuclear energy program of North Korea has to be negotiated carefully. And really, we're I, I don't think we're even at that stage yet. Right. Thank, that's, that's fascinating. Thanks for the insight, uh, uh, Mr. Albright. I appreciate it.